We're on the Ray Harry Housen set from Indicator, Volume 1, 1955 to 1960. Comes 20 million miles to Earth, which is number 42 in the Indicator collection. Now, this one revolves around uh, kind of man's first flight to Venus in the form of this spacecraft that's going to crash land in the opening scene near Sicily. This spaceship is really like a throwback to almost uh, the kind of spaceships that I saw in the old Flash Gordon serials. Looks identical to that, completely impractical, but just nice aesthetically. And it lands, there is a strange canister that is found, this boy goes and sells it to a local professor and this thing hatches and turns into a kind of Gorgon, a Godzilla, almost King Kongish type of character throughout the movie. It starts off incredibly small and grows throughout the entire movie. And one of the things I should say straight off is they don't hold back. They show you this thing early on. You see lots of it. There are a tremendous amounts of special effects within this movie all wonderful in their own way, they're just so practical and in your face and terrific to see. William Hooper plays Robert Calder, Joan Taylor is Marissa Leonardo and they're going to be our two heroes. Uh, one is an army operative who has turned up to try and figure out uh, what happened to the spaceship and discovers this rogue beast that's now on the loose. Uh, the other is an almost doctor and they have a little bit of banter about that and she is going to kind of help because she lives with the professor and the two of them are going to help try and figure out what this thing is and how they can stop it and this thing feels big it feels grandiose with the amount of extras and the amount of effects that it has in it and it just the story just kicks off and continually goes places that i never expected it you, you get an opening scene of this beast at the start kind of walking about a table and it's so fantastic and it's quite small the professor puts it in a cage it's massive and escapes and it constantly is growing but it never goes on the rampage that you expect at the start because they're always capturing it and trying to do more experiments on it to see if they can discover more about this creature which is from Venus obviously. And when you get to the finale of the movie you get a wonderfully tense and action-packed set piece. You get this gigantic beast which is now wrestling at an elephant which is kind of broke out of the zoo and this wonderfully prolonged action fight set piece you get uh, the army coming in with all their grenades and rocket launchers trying to battle this thing which is now climbed on top of the Colosseum and is having a massive standoff with these things and it does follow all the typical tropes of the 50s monster movies you have a kind of mismatched pair who are going to probably have some kind of connection throughout the movie you've got a monster on the loose you even get that one guy, you know the one guy at the end that just turns up to just flatly just make a statement that's a kind of like morality uh, clause of the movie. This, you know, like we should never have uh, went too far by going to Venus or some bonkers thing that I can't remember. They just got all of those fun things. But the special effects are just utterly wonderful. They're the thing that kept driving me forward. I kept getting more and more and they were terrific to look at and the beast was great and the movie was just entertaining and thrilling and it kind of did go places I wasn't expecting which is a, a big thumbs up. 20 million miles uh, from Earth uh, is a really good watch. I put it on par with It Came From Beneath the Sea. I kind of like both of them. I think this one had a little bit more meat to its bones and something I would definitely recommend checking out if you like these kind of movies. I'd love to know your thoughts on 20 million miles to earth. Let me know in the comment box below and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.